They got to be in there because everybody's trying to force them down my throat. And the reason I told you was is because on a Saturday, very busy, Earl, my great salesman, comes up to me all day long. Boss, I got a deal. Let's rock. Come on. These people want to buy from us. You couldn't mess it up if you tried. And he'd get me excited. But then we had Dick. And Dick had been there for 25 years and had really not <coughs> doing so well. And at that point, Dick was coming up five times a day, walking like this, dead man walking. And at the end of the day, he got halfway across the showroom floor, and I did this. I went, oh, shit, what are you guys doing? That still sucks, does it? <laughs> and I started to spill on him. He hadn't even begun talking. I kicked the customer out, and I realized on the drive home that I never saw his customer. He never saw his customer, buyer's order, worksheet, never saw nothing. But as a kid, Dick had programmed me that I had to die if I were to deal with him because it'd be better than working a deal with Dick. So on Monday morning is when I said, guys, let's rearrange these questions. Same thing throughout the whole process. I don't qualify and eliminate. You're assuming that somebody's not going to buy a car doesn't qualify. Usually the person that buys is the one with the problem. So I don't try to eliminate. Then we spend a lot of time in presentation demonstration. And then the most time in the whole thing was in the close. And up here, we said, oh, we've been taught for 50 years, you've got to do a feature and a benefit presentation. I'm telling you right now, if you're doing a feature benefit presentation and you think that's what's going to sell you a car, you are getting your ass kicked, I bet. The reason being is, it's not enough. People don't buy cars. You can do a feature benefit presentation, but you have to do more than that. You have to tell a story. You've got to tell stories.